we've come to a turning point in the book of religious affections. Uh, this this part three of the book is uh, twelve what he considers sure signs uh, that someone really is a Christian. And before he moves into that, he has a little preface, a couple pages that just says there's some limits to what we can expect to get from this part of the book. Uh, and, and one of the things that is a limit is that you won't be able to use these 12 signs and then look at your neighbor and know for sure that is infallibly whether or not they're a Christian. There's really only so much you can do in terms of knowing someone else's heart. And so he wants to say, yes, these are, these are true, good Bible ways to think about things, and yet you probably are not going to come out of there knowing for sure about the salvation of your neighbor. And when it comes to yourself, he's going to say, you, you're going to be able to get a little bit further, and yet he wants to clearly say that if you are the kind of person that's walking in disobedience, walking far from God, you should not expect to find a high level of assurance. Uh, if you are walking in disobedience, then then you should, you should uh, not try to use these 12 signs to prove that despite the fact you're living in disobedience, you still are a Christian. Uh, and he, he really points to uh, sort of what we might say, your walk needs to match your talk. And so uh, a, a Christian uh, will be putting away sin and will be pursuing righteousness. And if these things are happening, then, then perhaps somebody could have some good assurance. Uh, the th third uh, limit he puts on this section of the book is, uh, if you have a particularly hard-hearted hypocrite, uh, you know, somebody that you know and they think they're a Christian and you're like, hey, great, this is great ammunition. I can go, I can take these 12 signs, I'll talk to this hard-hearted man, and I'll just show him he's not really a Christian. He says, I'm not really sure it's going to work. Hard-hearted people are difficult. And if you think that just by reasoning with this person, uh, you're going to convince them that they're not a Christian, uh, he's just not hopeful that will do it. He, now, he believes that God, by the Spirit, could in fact do it, but that these are not ways that will just break down a hard-hearted person, at least with any assurance. It may, but, but don't try to think that these 12 signs are, are the ways that you're going to work on that hypocrite that you know. So with that being said, he, he does say, so what is the first sign? What's the first true sign? And it is that God has changed your heart. He's given you a new heart. And it's done in a supernatural way. It's done in a divine way. It's done in a spiritual way. And what he's getting at is he's trying to say that you're not what you were before. Before you were the natural man. You were the person who really didn't care much about God. And now you're not a natural man. You're, you are a new creature. And because you're a new creature, you're quite different than you were as an unbeliever. And the change that's in you is supernatural. That is, God by His Spirit has changed you. And it's also divine, which means it's God that has changed you. You didn't change yourself. So there's a big change in you, and it's in your heart, and that's really what He's after. And what He wants to say is that your life will look different. And he, as He begins to move in this direction, He wants to say that the kinds of changes in your life will be uh, changes along the lines of holiness. You will be more holy. Uh, you will care more about God. You will love God. And he, and he begins then to unpack, and this is a longer section, so we're going to not say everything that's in this section, but a couple of things that he says that are, are important is this. Look, it looks different in a believer than an unbeliever. So let's just take the idea you're going to love God. If you're a believer, you're going to love God. And he's going to say, well, there's a difference. With, with the unbeliever, they're going to say, who, who thinks that they are a believer, he's, they're going to say, I love God. And yet, they only know to say that they love God. They know that they should say that they love God. They know they should love God. But that's not the same thing as them actually loving God. They, they may say, I delight in God, but they're only saying it because they know those Christians are supposed to say. But they don't actually have any delight in God. And, and this is where Edwards gives one of his more famous illustrations from, uh, from this book, which is he talks about honey. And he says, you know, you could, someone can talk about the sweetness of honey. And if you've never tasted a honey, you can talk about how sweet it is. But if you've never tasted it, then you're going to talk about it in a completely different way than somebody who has actually tasted the sweetness of honey. And because they know the sweetness of honey, they love the way it tastes, they will speak of it differently. And it will just show because they don't just know to say that honey is sweet. They have tasted the sweetness of it. And so he wants to talk about religious experience, and there's a, there's a change in your heart. The Spirit has changed your heart so that you really love God, and you don't just say the right things, I love God, I delight in Him, but there really is a love and a delight there that's behind the saying, I love and I delight in God. And so this is important to Edwards when he's talking about, uh, he's trying to help people examine their own hearts. This is, again, this is going to be more helpful to you to figure out your own heart, not uh, not try to figure out your neighbor's heart, but in your own heart, you can begin to examine your own heart. 
Uh, the second thing, uh, example that he gives about the difference between believers and an unbeliever is just the way that we do things like, and this is apparently something that Edwards heard quite often, someone would say, well, a verse was brought to mind. Now, now, when a verse is brought to mind, then some people say, well, I know I'm a Christian because a verse was brought to mind. And Edwards wants to say, well, if you're excited that a verse was brought to mind and what excites you about it is that this thing happened, a verse was brought to mind, then that is really doesn't really demonstrate that you're really a Christian. Uh, a b believer may have a verse brought to mind, but what he delights in is not the act of the verse being brought to mind, but what that verse demonstrates about the one they love. So they love Christ, and if they love Christ, they love that this verse reminds them of the glory of Christ. And so it's the glory of Christ revealed in that verse that brings joy to their heart, right? So it's the same instance, but in a believer, it's not the act of a verse brought to mind, and isn't that exciting, but it's, it's the glory of Christ that always makes the heart sing and makes the heart warm to the Lord. It's, it's the glory of Christ. And so he's helping people examine their own hearts and to say, why is it something like a verse of mine brought to, brought to or a, a verse being brought to my mind excites me? Is it the Christ whose glory is revealed in the scriptures that excites me? That's a good, good thing. That's, that's a good evidence. Perhaps this person has a heart that loves God. Uh, but if it's just the act of a verse being brought to mind, then perhaps not. So in the end, what Edwards is trying to do in this section is he's trying to have you look at your own heart and say, do you have a changed heart? Do you have a changed heart in such a way that you love God? And then to drill down a little bit and say, now, what, what do you mean when you say that you love God? Is it, just, is it just words that you know you're supposed to say? Or can you, can you sense that there's really been a change? There really is a warmness, a fondness, a, a seeing of God's glory that it makes you happy to think about his greatness. Uh, if, if these are the ways, again, we're, so we're being thoughtful about what we mean when we say we love God. And if you can find that there is a change of heart, the kind of change of heart that only God can bring, there's a real love for him, there's a longing to, to know more of him, to spend more time in his word, right? If, if these things characterize you, then, then this is good evidence that, that God by his spirit has divinely and supernaturally given you a spiritual mind and a spiritual heart, and you have good reason now to believe that you truly are born again.